Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're back for part two of this exciting series. And what we're doing is in part one, we got the data for stock price forecasting on the Amazon uh, stock uh, closing day price for the past 15 years, right? And I exported that from R into a uh, text file. So now if you have not watched that, you're gonna need to watch that. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna visualize it in Power BI. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So right here on this notepad, uh, you can see the data that we had, right? You got two columns. You got the index column, which is actually the date field, right? 2005, 6, 14, and all these different dates here. And then the second is the close price, right? So we have the date and the close price for 15 years. Now, what you want to do is we're going to end up with a graph just like this, where you're going to be able to uh, forecast. And this is the forecast over here. But let me show you something. So what I want to show you, uh, so this is the file right here that I wrote to from R. And so now let's take these off of here. And what I want to do is I want to show you how we're going to build it from scratch. Okay, so let's just take this and remove this. So that's gone. And I want to take this data out. So let's delete the data. Delete it. So you can see it from scratch. Give it a second. Apply changes. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, so first when you come in here, you've opened up Power BI, we're gonna go get our data. So we know with this data, it's not an Excel sheet in this case, it's a text CSV. So we're gonna click on that. And then you just have to go to find it. In this case, it's under uh, stock price forecast in this folder right here, and it's right here, so that's what I want. So hit open and make sure it's text files, text CSV, PRN. If it's something else, you have to pick what it is. So just hit open. Give it a second here. There we go. There's our index with our dates, and there's Amazon.close, which are our closing prices for 15 years of data. So what we're going to do, once we've seen that in here, we're just going to load it in. And then it'll populate it right over here like you just saw before. Give it a second. It's applying the changes. And it's applying. Remember, it's pulling in 15 years data. There it is. It's not too bad. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to immediately take this. This is a line chart. I'm going to put that over there, and then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, like you saw how we had it there. I'm going to do it just like this. And then what I want to do is remember you have the index of the date, right? So I'm going to put that right here. And now look at the problem here we have here. See this? So we do have index. I can do it this way, but I can also change the date format here if I wanted to, too. If I needed to, I can go back here, and I can click on index. And see it's date, but it's in this format. I really don't want it in that format. It's all right, but I'm going to put it in this format of just DDYY, or it's four Ys, D, and month. That's actually best to say it that way. And so then we go back here. Once that's done, we're going to take this and put it to index, which is kind of like putting it to date uh, instead of breaking up by month, date, year. And then I'm going to bring in the close, right? So the close price, I'm going to put that under values. Now, if I had other fields I was bringing in, I could put in a legend or something else like that. But, um, can hear my dog in the background getting a drink of water anyway um so you can see right now we've got the same graph you were looking at earlier in r okay it's just a little bit different looking it says index versus amazon close i can go change these column fields and stuff it's very simple to do right here i could change the amazon close right here just to be stock price or something like that you can rename that let's make that stock price and uh I've got a T that sticks here, the key. And then we could make the uh, this date. We could just go here and rename that to date. Okay. And then it looks a little bit better. Oops. I think we lost the date on that. That's fine. Let's go back. If you know, if you click off it too quick, it doesn't give you that. So let's do it again. Rename that to date. And click in here. There we go. There it goes. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to be able to forecast this, right? So when I want to forecast, I've got, see these buttons right here, these tabs? This last one right here for a line graph with time series data will show this forecast piece right here. Now the thing is that when I do this, I'm going to show you something here in a second. So watch this. If I pull this down, it's all grayed out, right? So I'm going to hit Add. 
And let's say I wanted to add, because this is big data, this is, you know, 15 years of data. So if I put 10 data points, will I see it? So let's put 100 on here, right? And if I put 100 points and I could put a confidence interval of 95%, that's fine. Just leave it the way it is. Seasonality if I want, all that, right? Now look what happens. Do I see any forecast there? I don't. Now why don't I see a forecast there? Well, I'm going to show you in a minute. There's an error, but it's not showing quite yet. So let's change this. This is the date, right? So let's change this down and narrow this down to a lot shorter of a date range. So if we take date as all, right, and we take this, we're not going to select individual dates. It's a waste of time. So let's go to advanced filtering. And then what we want to do is not is, but we want to do is after, right? Because it's a date. I want it after something. So let's pick, oh, let's say... 6 1. There's a reason why I'm picking this, okay? Of 2020. It's June 1st of this year, right? So that, that means it's all this data except for maybe up to here is gone. So let's just do that and see what happens. Now I picked that there. We now see how the forecast is there. But now what if I picked 3 1? Do you see how the forecast is gone now? It's not there anymore. So let's bring this down a little bit so you can see it better. Now, if I go to, let's bring it to maybe 5.1, right? See how it's still not showing the forecast yet? And the reason being is it thinks it's highly variable data. There it is, there's the X. And it's telling you the data is too irregular to forecast. So in that case, I can forecast this in R, and I've got lots of great videos on how to do that. But for Power BI, the standard default forecast function doesn't work for this yet. But you saw earlier when I picked 6.1, it did. So let's find out where it starts to work for that. So we know 6.1 does. What if we pick 5.25, right? It works for that. So what if we picked 5.20? It does not work for that. There's too much variability there. So again, we got the red X here right now. It's too irregular to forecast. So 525 it worked. What about 523? It works for 523. How about 522? One of these you'll see it'll start to cut off. All right, let's try 521. Let's try that. 521 is the cutoff. So 522, I think it worked 522. Let's try again. There we go. So now that's 100 points. What if we took it down to, I don't know, 25 points? So yeah, 1,025 points. That's 25 points, right? Let's apply that. And you can see your forecast. Let's pick it down even more. Let's put it down 20 points. That might be better. And the reason being is we're only doing so many days here, so you don't want to have a huge forecast out here. I'd probably even pick 15, to be honest with you. So let's do that, 15 days. So what we've got here is from 522. Now, what if by changing these, does that have an effect on it? Let's take a look. So if I put 521, does that change it? Still doesn't work. See, because the variability is just too high there, it says. So literally here for this data set, now this is going to be different for each data set, but for this data set, when I apply the filter, this red thing will go away. See, it goes away. So for this data set, I can literally only have from 526 until 715, which is about, you know, uh, a month and a half, a little bit over a month and a half's data to project with or to forecast with. That's not a whole lot. According to this, though, if you look at Amazon for the past month and a half, and you can easily see it from this, it's going to be going up, the odds are. But this is not the most accurate way to forecast. I'm using the default forecasting method built into Power BI, and that's what this is. Now, if you want something more powerful, more accurate, go watch my videos. There's many of them on using Aremas. I love to use Aremas because they're easy. They're easy for people to understand, and they're easy to reproduce. And I, they tend to not be overfit. So you've got to be careful when you overfit your models um, that it could be fit to one stock or one area like around a, uh, uh, a recession or something like 2008 for instance and then it may not apply as well to future data uh, that you're looking at or wanting to look at but so here you saw we've in the first video we have brought in the data I showed you how to get the data for Amazon and in this video I showed you the limitations of Power BI but we were still able to, fo to forecast it based on that so our 
you know, obviously our data ends here and the forecast goes here. And it's pretty much a straight line going up, which means Amazon is probably a pretty good idea still going forward, especially with the COVID uh, pandemic going on and people are staying home most of the time and ordering uh, stuff from Amazon and uh, other uh, similar websites like that. So if I wanted to, I can open it back up to see the rest of the dates, but then my forecast will go. So if I were to take this off here, right? So I've got is after this, I can just hit the eraser button and it brings back all of my data, but now my forecast is not there, but I can still see my data and I can do some cool things with that if I wanted to. But the thing here was I want you to be able to quickly forecast this. So now you can see how I, how it's done is after and in this case it has to be what was it 5 22 2020 i think it was Apply the filter and there's our forecast again so thanks for watching i hope you found this helpful we showed you exactly how to load this in to power bi in this episode or this uh, part and the previous one we showed you how to get this data so you'd have every day of closing price data for amazon for a set period of time and i showed you how to do that in the previous video if you haven't watched that please go back and watch it there'll be a link right at the end of this to get you to that or you can just go on my uh, channel and find the other video uh, so go back and watch that and then watch this and you'll be able to quick you'll see this the purpose of this was not necessarily to make you the most accurate forecast it was to show you just how to quickly get the data for any uh, traded fund or uh, ETF or stock that you can find through Yahoo Finance how to get the data and then put it to a text file and then be able to put it into Power BI for quick data visualization and uh, forecasting. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day. Thanks.